In this video we're going to run through creating a uh, lighting circuit in CableCalc. There are two types of lighting circuits within CableCalc. One for street lighting, which gives us a 5 second disconnection time, uh, and another for your ordinary lighting circuits, which gives you a 0.4 second disconnection time, and you can use that for domestic and commercial. Uh, for small domestic lighting circuits it's probably easier just to do it as a uh, radial calculation. Uh, obviously uh, the, the lighting circuit facility gives you the opportunity to enter the load and the distance to the next fitting uh, and thereby calculate the load and uh, volt drop at just that fitting as opposed to taking into account the, uh, the load at one end uh, and assuming that load across the entire length. Uh, so we're going to do a lighting circuit, we'll put it onto category lighting and we'll say it's a highway lighting circuit which gives us our 5 second disconnection time. Uh, you can use a standard TNS supply uh, with 0.15 impedance and a 0.9 power factor. Uh, so in the top section under lighting circuit data, you just enter the load of the fitting and the distance from the previous fitting, unless it's the first fitting, uh, in which case it's the distance from the supply. And then a location reference, uh, I'm just going to put column 1 in there. Uh, you don't have to enter a description reference, if you, uh, if you don't want to you can just leave that blank. So I'm just going to put another fitting in there, distance 30 to column to, and you can see at the bottom here under load and distance it's uh, updating our total load and our total distance as we add each fitting. I'm just going to add another two more into that. Column 3 and column 4. And you can see we've got a total load of 4.4 amps there and a distance of 120 meters. Uh, so now we're going to go into cable selection and we're going to run this in a steel wire armored multi core. We're going to use a 3 core because we want to use the uh, internal core as a CPC. And we're going to bury it in a duct to the ground. And we're going to use a 6 mil cable for this. Uh, go on to correction factors. Here you've got the opportunity to enter data for uh, any correction factors you might have, uh, ambient ground temperature, uh, grouping factors if you're running more than one cable, soil resistivity if you know that you've got dry soil, uh, and there's correction factors for the depth of the length of the cable as well because it's a buried cable. Uh, we're going to leave all of those as standard for now. We move on to protective device, and uh, now we're going to select a cartridge shoe, so we're going to go for a BS88 tan amp to protect this, and uh, we're going to use the cable sheath arm as a CPC but we're also going to use an additional core. Uh, so if we evaluate that we can see that that's all passed fine. We've got minimum volt drop, minimal volt drop because we've only got a few fittings and uh, not that much distance in the grand scheme of things. And um, You can see that the cable is uh, well suited for the load and the CPC is, uh, is more than adequate according to the adiabatic. Uh, so we're going to view the report of that cable now and create a PDF of it. And here we can see we've got all the data for the lighting circuit with a tick for a pass. You can see all the details there of the uh, earth fault data and the uh, R1, R2 values, etc. And if we go down onto the next page, you've got a breakdown of the load and the uh, volt drop at each fitting, uh, you know, which is the whole point of, of doing it as a lighting circuit so that you can uh, see what that is at each point. 